I told you that every interface has a link local address. So it's not important if you have a globally routable public IPv6 address on your interface, but every interface activated with IPv6 has to have a link local address. So what is that? The link local address comes from the block fe80 colon colon slash 10 and is automatically generated once the interface comes up, which is IPv6 enabled. You can also set this manually, but most of the time people use the automatic configuration. The block is stated as a slash 10, but if you check your own system, you will find out, oh, actually my host says it's fe80 something and then slash 64. That's usual. That's not a problem because the scope is a slash 64, but the whole thing will come out of the fe80 colon colon slash 10 block. You don't have to worry about this. A link local address has to be active on every interface which is IPv6 enabled. So there cannot be a single interface, even if you have a public IPv6 address, you still also need to have a link local IPv6 address. This address is used for the neighbor discovery protocol and also for DHCPv6. So you really need it because remember neighbor discovery protocol is like ARP and more. And if you don't have an address, you cannot ARP. You cannot communicate with anybody. So how do you generate a link local address? Your host will first generate an address out of this prefix using a process called EUI64 that I will explain later. Once you have a link local address on your interface, the host will do a duplicate address detection, DAD, by sending a neighbor solicitation to this solicited node multicast address for your specific address. So it will send a message to this multicast address. Hello, I have this address. Does anybody have a MAC address for this address? And if there is no neighbor advertisement received, you know that there is no neighbor that is using this same address or else I would get a reply. So I know my address is usable. And as long as the DAD is not successful, the new address is marked as tentative and it is not used for outgoing connections. And if everything works well, you have generated an address, DAD is fine, your address becomes active. So let's have a look at the details of DAD, duplicate address detection. It is used to make sure that your generated address is unique. It is also used to make sure that your statically configured address is unique. So it is always used once an interface comes up, which has a valid IPv6 address. This is used with a stateless address auto configuration and also with link local addresses. How does duplicate address detection work? First, a neighbor solicitation is sent to the own solicited node multicast address. The source address, because you don't have any address yet, is the unspecified address colon colon. Because, like I told you, you don't know that your address is unique yet, so you will not use it. Secondly, you will wait for a neighbor advertisement in case somebody is already using this address. You will send your neighbor solicitation message. If you receive a neighbor advertisement message as a response to your neighbor solicitation message, you know that, oh, my address is not unique. I cannot use it and I have to generate a new one somehow. So the target for this NA message is the all nodes multicast group. Everybody will receive this message because the source host does not use the new address yet and it cannot be sent to this address. For the generation of the link local address, I told you that there is a process that's called EUI64. It is the process to generate the 64-bit interface identifier because 64 bits is the link local scope and the rest of the 128 bits of the whole address is 64 and this is called interface identifier. In most implementations, you use your 48-bit MAC address and insert FFFE into it. I will explain in the next slide. Also, there is a process to use unrelated numbers. This is called IPv6 privacy extensions. So think about it. Your MAC address should be unique worldwide. If this is included into your IPv6 address, you could be theoretically traceable because your laptop is online in this network now 
and it is locked at the Google server. And next week you're in China, you're in a different network, you have a different prefix, but the same rest of the prefix, the same last 64 bits. And Google will know, oh, this is the same user that was in the US last week and that's in China now. They can theoretically track you. So people invented IPv6 privacy extensions wherein unrelated random number is generated that changes all the time. EI64, how does it work? You have an interface MAC address. Here's an example. The MAC address is only 48 bits, but we need to fill the 64 bits of the host part. So in the middle, you will insert FFFE. There is one more thing. The universal local bit is switched to one, which means my MAC address is globally unique. We like to think that. So have a look. What is your link local address? It starts with FE80, then colon colon, because that's the rest of the first 64 bits. Then we have a two because of the switched UL bit. And then we have the exact MAC address with FFFE in the middle. It's not that hard, but you have to think about it. Maybe skip back one slide, think about it some more. But in practice, I told you this is automatically generated. So you just have to know what it is. If you can see the FFFE, you know, okay, this is no privacy extension. This is the real MAC address around the FFFE.